Well, good morning. How are you all today? And welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. <clears throat> today I'm going to give you some kind of surprising uh, information about who all the preppers are. Uh, it was surprising to me. Maybe not shocking. It's probably going to shock some people, but, uh, but surprising to say the least. Uh, before we get started on that, I want to remind you that this and all of our videos are brought to you by the Stone Moss series, our sponsor on all of our videos. Yes, my books, The Reversion, The Revival, The Renewal, and Appeal to Heaven, The Blessings of Freedom, and Hostages to Fortune. The great story. It'll, con it contains all of the preparedness and survival lessons you could ever want. Uh, people tell me that they've read through it five times and are still finding things that they didn't see the first four times. And you can get it through Amazon, the whole set, if you'd like, one at a time if you'd like. Uh, you can get them through Amazon, links down below, or through our website. The light is, uh, I have to adjust the lights in this place. It's glaring off of there at you, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> Or you can get it through our, our website, uh, stonemont.us, and I love the way for you to do that because it lets me sign them for you and uh, and write a little note, and I love to do that. You know, I had a funny uh, I had a funny comment the other day uh, from someone I don't remember who it was, and they said, "I have a challenge for you. Try to name those books without holding them up in front of you." and prove that you really wrote those because it doesn't sound like you really wrote why would somebody hold up some books and say that they had written them if they hadn't can you imagine i know you you all know oh you want proof so yes i can do it i i rattle them off because i've done it so often so you want uh, you want you want proof there see me see me back when i was a little bit younger and prettier that's me that's right <laughs> so you can get those through Amazon or through uh, stonemont.us and and uh, love to have them. Uh, <clears throat> who are the preppers uh, and where do you find them? You know, I hear a lot of people talking about, well, I can't find anybody that, uh, uh, you know, that feels the same way I do and, and, and on and on and on. It kind of depends on what circles you run into. I mean, as I've said before, there are many, many different circles of preparedness and there are preppers and there are PMPs, which I call PMPs, preparedness minded in, uh, people, which is when they take it into a lifestyle and they've gone beyond just a stocking up on things and, you know, stocked up stuff and, and a go bag, but they really make it their, their life. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and then people say, well, I can't find any, uh, people around and I try to tell them how to do that. And then I, I have said in the past, I'm, I'm, I, I got a lot of argument about, about this one. I said, I've come to find that, in my opinion, there are more preppers in the suburbs and cities than there are the countries in the country. Not the countries in the world, but who knows, maybe, uh, but uh, in the country. And, boy, I, I get a lot of people pushing me back on that and say, that's no way, you know, city people don't know squat. <laughs> well, we, can, we know where they live, don't we? Uh, when you say that, we know where you live. Uh, I, I never hear it the other way around. I never hear people from the city saying, country folks don't know squat. There's a lesson in there that I won't get into. Uh, but no, 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 city people, there, there, there's nothing. We in the country are all prepared. Well, that's not really true. Uh, and, and I have experience in, in all those areas. And I tell people, uh, you want to you wanna know where the preppers are? Write six books about it. When when my book, I'm going to give you some some uh, some uh, percentages here in a minute. They're going to surprise you, and I think it's going to help you kind of identify where uh, those people are and and what and what they are. And I think that can be really important. And it also gives us a, an idea of where preparedness is heading in the future. And I think that's important. Uh, I, I've I've talked about this a little bit before that that when my first book came out, the reversion. Uh, yes, I could name that without having to look at it. Uh, and was it come out in 2017? And and all of a sudden, when people that I knew, uh, many of them not well, just they, they heard, huh, you know, Steve Smith wrote a book, uh, and they checked out the book, and a whole bunch of them started buying it. And even people, I was surprised that people that I knew would buy my book. You know, I bought it off of Amazon. And... Uh, and all of a sudden, so many people, they just came out of the woodwork telling me, hey, Steve, 
I prep. Let, you want you want to you know, and they they tell me, and sometimes they'd invite me over to their house, and I mean, I saw some serious prepping. Now this is in the suburbs, um, <clears throat> and that's what's going to surprise so many people. And uh, the more that I, I I got into it, the more that I wrote about it. You know, with every book, more and more people, and I I have come to see. Uh, it, it is amazing the people who prep. You would be very surprised. I'm going to uh, I'm going to give you some figures here that I think will surprise you. I was watching and I don't remember. I guess it was a he had a special on preparedness, and so that caught my eye. As uh, the uh, the guy Patrick Bet David, are you familiar with him? He's over. He has his valuetainment. Uh, channel. He, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't really know his background. He's a business guy. Uh, he, he did a lot of interviews with Sammy the Bull and, and, uh, Michael Francis and, and some others. And, uh, and he did one the other day and I don't remember who it was with, but it was about preparedness. Now he, he had looked up these, these figures. Now I haven't looked these up. So I'm not I'm not swearing to, I can't verify them for them personally, but I happen to know that this guy does his homework, and so I'm going to go along with it. And to be honest, it has uh, it coincides with what I have found. So and, and I have a fairly large and wide uh, information base myself. Now listen to this: one out of three men are preppers. Now, when we talk about this, because because right now a lot of people says, no, I can't believe that. I know a lot of guys and they're not preppers. Okay, well, that doesn't make it. Okay. Maybe you know the wrong people or maybe you don't know anybody uh, or maybe uh, because they're, you know, we get, I see comments like that all the time. I don't like people. I stay away from people. I don't know about people. I don't let them know about me. Well, then you're not going to know, right? And and that that's kind of a shame because you're holding yourself back. Uh, but we also need to understand here, let me put this back to, no, uh, that there, there is a wide spectrum of, of preparedness, right? And, uh, and I've talked about this before there, everything, you know, if you buy, you know, multiple cans of green beans when they're on sale, you are to an extent a, a prepper. If you buy an extra large, you know, a bunch of toilet paper instead of the four roll, you are essentially prepper, uh, a prepper simply because you're thinking down the road, you know, so that when this runs out, you don't have to go back to the store. You are preparing to a certain extent. Now, we wouldn't we wouldn't consider those people preppers, but that is indicative of a, a preparedness operation, if you want to put it that way. Anybody who buys more than they need on a daily or weekly basis you could put them, you know, loosely on the preparedness spectrum. And now we're not really talking about those people, but that just lets you know that, you know, the seed for preparedness is planted in, in most people's minds. It just hasn't grown. It hasn't developed. Okay. And then we go down to the other, <clears throat> the other far end, and that is the person who will never go need to go to the store <clears throat> again in their life because, number one, they have a whole lot of stuff stored. And then number two, they... They provide, they grow everything they need. They can provide themselves with everything they need. They are not reliant on the system, on the external systems anymore. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll think about it. one out of three men are preppers or consider themselves preppers. Now, I don't think the guy who buys 10 cans of bean considers himself preppers or the guy who who goes down and gets the extra large package of toilet paper, I don't think he considers himself a prepper. So here we have to say, how do they, you know, the, the, we're talking about one in three men consider themselves to be a prepper. And, you know, that would go in, okay, they're, they're familiar with the concept. They understand food, water, shelter, defense, people, things like that to some extent, you know. But I would say that one in three is pretty darn high. And I'd say that it's probably a lot higher than it was 20 years ago. Now, here's one that's going to surprise a lot of people, probably. doesn't surprise me at all, because I'll tell you why. One out of four women are preppers. Yeah, now that is going to surprise a lot of people. 
And I think that's great. The reason that it doesn't surprise me is because, again, when my first book came out, where is it back there? Is it right over there? That one, the reversion. Uh, when that one came out, uh, among the people who I knew who bought it and just came to me raving about it, the vast majority were women. Now, it's not because, and, and my, my, we joked about it. I said, wow, so many women love this book. Uh, maybe I'm a romance novelist, not just a... Well, I think what the thing was uh, is that that women learned a lot. First off, women have a preparedness mindset. You know, this is why, I mean, study after study shows, you know, uh, men marry for one thing, women marry for another, or look for partners in another. And one of the most important things that women look for is a partner who can protect, protect and provide. Okay. And so they are at a very base innate level uh, all about preparedness because, you know, they, they're thinking about taking care of their children, right? Making sure that they're all right. They want a man who can do that. If they don't have a man who can do that, then they have to do it. And sadly, too many women today are having to do that. But uh, the ones who came, who read the book that, that, uh, uh, that knew me, they, they just came and raved about it. And then when I looked at so many of the... Uh, uh, the Amazon reviews, so many of the ones just raving about it were, uh, were women. So, uh, so anyway, I, I think one of the reasons I don't use a lot of my, I, well, I don't use a lot of bad language in my books and things like that. It's, I'm perfectly capable to get, a, you know, the, the point across without using a lot of cussing and swearing. But what I noticed also here is the guys who, read my book, Who Knew Me, they weren't all effusive about it. And you know why? Because guys have, too many guys have this attitude, well, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do unless they're, you know, whatever, I, I don't know. And they didn't know anything about preparedness, but they also didn't want to admit that they didn't know anything about preparedness. That's a very interesting dynamic. Very, very interesting. And it comes down to, like, choosing your people, too. And I made a lot of choices uh, as, a, as a result of that. Women want to learn. Men only want to learn from certain other men. That's, that's interesting. Uh, so one out of three men are preppers. One out of four women are preppers. Now, here comes the surprise. Uh... You know, we have a tendency to think that all of us boomers, uh, all of us older guys, we're the preppers, right? We know it all. I, I, I don't have these same feelings, but so many out there, I, I see your, your comments, you know, really denigrating the younger generations, forgetting that the previous generation has denigrated you as not knowing squat, right? Okay, so uh, let, me, let me give you this. Of, of the boomers... 18% are consider themselves preppers. 18%. 18% of boomers are preppers. Okay. So now we would expect, well, the, the following generations is going to go more like 15, 10, 5, you know, because after all, they're only interested in their phones and their electronics and their technology and their stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Au contraire. No, it doesn't. It goes up. Now, some of the old hard heads out there won't believe this. That's to your detriment. I suggest you believe this because I also see this reflected in what I know. And I have uh, my kids are Gen Z's. Uh, so remember, 18% of boomers consider themselves preppers. Gen X, 20%. Head it up. Gen Y, 39%. 39%. Gen Z, 40%. Does that surprise you? I bet it does. I bet it does. It surprised me. It really did. So we're talking about for two whole, we're going down to the boomers and the Gen Xs. Okay, the, the older people. Is that it? Yeah, Gen Xs. For, uh, about 
18 to 20%. The younger people, Gen Y, Gen Z, right up at 40%. I mean, that really surprised me. I bet that surprises a lot of you. Well, now the reason that maybe it shouldn't have surprised me is because of, of my son has talked a lot about this. And I've asked him, where did he get the understanding? Why, why he, does he think? Because you, being my son, you would imagine he would know a lot about preparedness, and he does, and that he would be interested in it, and he is. Uh, but but I, I, I asked him, do you believe this? He says, yeah. I says, why? Why are all these other people who don't have fathers who's written a bunch of books on this, why do all these other people of your generation prep? Why do they consider, even, even to the extent they consider themselves preppers? And, and by that, you ought to see what these kids carry in their cars. Really, seriously. Uh, he says, because of TikTok. And I'm going to make a separate one. I'm going to make one on the American Reversion uh, channel. I won't get into it a lot here, but I'm going to make one over there about the danger of banning TikTok because our government has a a reason, and it's not a good one, for wanting to ban TikTok. Well, anyway, my, my son says TikTok. He says, we see how the world is 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 a mess, you know, and these are the kids. You, you, you A lot of people out there, a lot of older people, they see all these kids on their phones. They, they think they're playing Candy Crush or something. That's the only game that I know about. Uh, or what was the old Space Invaders? Gosh, that dates me. Well, that, that I was already old when that came out. Uh, they think they're just messing around. These kids are learning. They know more than you can imagine. They are learning about the world. The news is coming over and they're learning about it. And you know what? Not everything on TikTok is a lie. A lot of it is the truth. Remember, the Russians, the Soviets, used to tell their citizens that everything coming from Voice of America was a lie, right? Just keep that in mind. It was A lot of it was propaganda, but a lot of it was just the truth being spread to let people know and to cause, you know, some dissatisfaction within the, the target country. Well, apply that here. But my son said, no, he says, we, we see it on, on TikTok. We know. Uh, what a mess the world is, and we expect it to get worse, and that's why 40% of Gen Z are preppers. So, I, I think you know these. This is 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 great. I was great. To, uh, I was glad to learn this. Uh, I think it's it's good to know. It's great that it's you know that this is the way it is. I think probably some of you were surprised. Uh, I, I'd be interested to hear. Any of you who know younger people who prepare and the whys of it. Uh, but what this does, not only should it give us uh, more hope for the future, because after all, these young people who are the future, more of them are prepping than us oldsters, okay? And uh, and they're prepping for another type of thing also, not just in case where they got to run to the woods, uh, but they are involved also in a type of of, uh, of prepping that has been termed most recently lifestyle prepping, which I think is also very important. I'll be talking about that more in a future video. So this lets you know uh, there are a lot more people out there interested in and involved in preparedness than most people have any idea. So uh, like I said, it should make you feel good, uh, but it also gives you, if you're looking for people, not only are they already out there, maybe you can find some, but these whole generations are obviously, as a result of these these figures, obviously open and receptive to the ideas that you might be able to introduce to them. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Hey, just one more reminder that uh, you can get my books. The Stone Mount series. Would that person like me to rattle them off again without looking at them? The reversion, the revival, the renewal, and appeal to heaven, the blessings of freedom, and hostages to fortune. And yes, number seven, I'll be done in a couple of weeks and probably be out in a couple of months. <clears throat> you can get those on Amazon, link below. You can get them through me directly, stonemont.us, link also below. 
I get to cite them for you and write a little note, and I love doing that. You all have a great day. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.